Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy keto meal recipe for you. Today, I am going to show you how to make simple keto chicken fajita pizza. This is super easy, super quick. And once you learn how to make the crust, you can put any sauce and any toppings you want on this. So if you want a printable version of this, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos at least every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase goes to me and helps support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Line a 13 inch round pizza pan with parchment paper. If you don't have a pizza pan, you can just use a nine by 13 cake pan and just line it with some parchment paper. Then set your pan aside for just a minute. In a large mixing bowl, Combine 112 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, a fourth teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of xanthan gum or psyllium husk powder. This is to help give your dough flexibility so that it can stretch across your whole pizza pan without coming apart. So you do need to have the xanthan gum or the psyllium husk powder or some other xanthan gum substitute. Add 10 grams or around two teaspoons of baking powder. Also, if you want to, you can add some dry seasonings of your choice. This will also help tone down any coconut flour flavor and give your pizza crust a much better taste. I'm using a total of one tablespoon of dry seasonings. It's just a mix of dry oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, and dried basil. You can use whatever you want or you can leave them out if you don't want any dry seasonings at all. Nine grams or around one tablespoon of dry instant yeast. This is simply for flavor. I've told you guys many times and will probably tell you many times again, yeast does nothing to help coconut flour rise. All we're doing is adding it to the coconut flour mixture to help your crust taste more like a traditional pizza crust. The yeast just helps tone down that coconut flour flavor a little bit. Sift everything all together until everything is fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are moist. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled. Make sure it is cooled. You do not want to add hot butter. Stir the butter in until everything is fully combined and a smooth dough is formed. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push the dough to the center of the bowl. Form the dough into a smooth ball. Then massage the dough ball in your hands just for about 20 to 30 seconds. This is just going to make sure that you have the right texture of dough. It's always a good idea when you're dealing with coconut flour Always test your dough before you shape it and bake it. You're wanting your dough to be soft and smooth and to hold its shape well. As you're massaging it, there shouldn't be chunks falling off. If your dough does feel dry and feels like it's not holding its shape well, then just add small amounts of room temperature water until your dough comes together and holds its shape well. After you're sure you have the right texture, form the dough back into a ball and place it back into your mixing bowl. Use a wooden spoon and break the ball of dough up just a little bit. Gradually fold in 30 grams or around a fourth cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. You do want this to be freshly grated. If all you have is the canned, it'll work, but it'll taste much, much better and have a better texture if you use freshly grated Parmesan. And 57 grams or around a half cup of grated mozzarella cheese. When you are adding the cheeses, make sure you just do this gradually. Put a little bit in, mix it up into the dough, then add a little bit more, mix it up into the dough. You don't want to add it all at once because the cheese will all clump together and it won't spread out evenly throughout your dough. So just in small amounts, fold it in until all the cheese is fully incorporated into the dough. 
Now, if you don't want to add the cheese, you can leave the cheese out. However, your dough will probably be a little bit drier if you leave the cheese out. The fat that's in the cheeses helps to create a little bit more moisture in your dough and it also helps to hold the ingredients together better so that it can hold the weight of the pizza toppings that you put it on and it also helps to tone down any coconut flour flavor. Once everything is fully combined, push your dough back to the center of the bowl and shape it back into a ball. Place the dough ball into the center of your prepared pizza pan or cake pan, whichever one you're using. Press the dough evenly throughout the pizza pan or the cake pan. Make sure you keep this as even as possible. Also, when you're pressing it out, make sure there's not any air bubbles that catch underneath the dough. Otherwise, you'll have bubbles in your crust and you don't want that. So press it out as even and as smooth as you can. Once the dough is all pressed evenly, place the dough in your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes or just until the crust is starting to get golden around the edges. Once the crust is golden, remove it from the oven and allow it to cool for about five minutes or just until you're able to touch it without burning your fingers. Keep your oven preheated to 400 degrees. In a small bowl, combine 130 grams or around a half cup of salsa or the hot sauce of your choice and 130 grams or around a half cup of a keto refried bean substitute. I'll leave a link in the description to my keto refried bean substitute or you can use whatever refried bean substitute you'd like. Mix the refried beans and the salsa together until everything is fully combined. Spread the mixture evenly over your crust. Make sure when you're spreading this, you leave about a half inch border around the edges so you have a little bit of a blank crust around the edges of your pizza. Now you can adjust the amount of sauce according to your personal taste. If you want to add a little bit more beans or a little bit more salsa, that's up to you. If you don't want quite as much sauce, you can put less. It's all up to you, all up to your personal taste. Once the sauce is spread evenly, then sprinkle around 224 grams or roughly about two cups of the shredded cheese of your choice over the sauce. I'm using Colby cheese. You can use whatever cheese you want. And you can also adjust the cheese more or less depending on how much you want. I like a lot of cheese. So if you don't like that much cheese, you just scatter on however much cheese you want. Just make sure you keep it in an even layer. Top the cheese with about a half pound of chopped cooked chicken or any meat of your choice. Scatter it evenly over the cheese. Add 79 grams or around a half cup of chopped red bell peppers and just again scatter them evenly over the top of the pizza. Add about 26 grams or roughly around a fourth cup of chopped red onions and again scatter them evenly over the top of the pizza. If you want to, you can add some sliced black olives. I just put a little tiny scatter of them over the top of everything. Now you can always change or adjust any of these toppings. When it comes to pizza, it's up to your personal flavor, your personal taste. Anything that you want can go on this. So be as creative as you want. Once all the toppings are evenly scattered over the top of the pizza, then place it back into your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for seven to 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted and the toppings are heated through. Once the pizza is done baking, remove it from the oven, allow it to cool in the pan for about five minutes or just until you're able to touch it without burning your fingers. Once it's cooled a little bit, slice your desired size piece. You serve these warm, eat them immediately. And if you do have any leftovers, Store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to three days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.